Aloha, you're watching F5 Ask the Expert. I'm Peter Silva. Web application firewalls or WAFs are a very critical component to securing your data and infrastructure. And so I'm thrilled to have senior security solutions architect, Brian McHenry with me. Good to see you, Brian. Good to see you, Peter. And uh, so I've been reading around, so there's this guy and he's going around telling these OWASP meetings that there's the death of the WAF, that WAFs are dead. And so I'm curious from your perspective, Aren't WAFs dead? Well, I don't know who this crazy person is that you're hearing is out there presenting such outlandish ideas because, as you said, WAFs are still a critical part of our security infrastructure. And what this guy might mean about the death of WAF is that we need to kind of move on from the sort of traditional notion of a web app firewall. Maybe the idea of SQL injection and cross-site scripting signatures uh, HTTP protocol compliance and, and some of the other things that we typically have done with a WAF in past are not the things we need to focus on so much today with the movements towards rapid continuous delivery of applications through uh, philosophies such as DevOps. Uh, also, we might be looking at WAF in that context where we're looking at web app vulnerabilities as maybe a little bit too daunting, a little bit too complex for us to manage and implement those types of policies. So is there a better way? And are there things about WAF technology that have maybe moved on from that sort of old approach? Okay, so, and particularly in these, um, you know, hybrid environments. So what are you saying? Like, I was reading somewhere that uh, it was a tweet the other day. I can't remember who had tweeted it out, but that, you know, if you get hacked by the OWASP, anything in the OWASP top 10, you can't say that that's an advanced you know, an advanced attack. How do you think about that? Well, you know, most most exploits, most data breaches, uh, da the data tells us that most of them occur from known vulnerabilities, things that we knew about. Either we knew it was something that could be exploited or we had a scan that said we had it in our environment. Uh, very few times is a successful breach come from a known, like a zero day type yeah. of vulnerability or exploit. Usually comes from something we've know we know about, we have a risk associated with it. Um, that's not an excuse, but that's a reality. So as people start to deploy these applications in, you know, in the cloud, in hybrid environments, highly virtualized, their own private data center, what are some of the things that they need to consider when deploying a WAF to protect those da the data and applications? Well, I think the thing to think about most when you have a diverse application footprint, you know, as in cloud, as in on-premises data center, is, is my application security policy something that's portable? Can I bring it to all these multiple environments? Uh, and this is something that you'll hear a lot from F5 uh, recently in the, in the coming months about hybrid WAF architectures, whether you're managing uh, Silverline web app firewall uh, or you're looking at ASM uh, on-premise on your big IP appliance or your Vipreon chassis, or perhaps you've got you know Amazon Web Services or Microsoft Azure where you've got a big IP VE running there that's got ASM enabled. Yep. The nice thing is that all of those platforms I just mentioned same operating system code, you can take that ASM policy and, and migrate them around pretty easily. So that's what I'm talking about when I talk about portability and being able to be consistent and uniform with that application security policy across those. And one of the things we were talking about before, and it kind of goes along the lines of that, you know, the advanced, the advanced pieces that you were talking about is that most of the WAFs these days really can, if you need SQL injection protection, you got it. You know, most of them offer that. And as we kind of, you know, chuckled about the OWASP top 10, but what are some of the more advanced things that people should be looking out for when deploying a WAF? Well, one of the things you'll hear a lot is that the weakest link in any web application is the browser. And quite frankly, not just the browser, but the individual behind it. So the human uh, that's interacting with the web app. So what can we do not only to, uh, as with SQL injection signatures, other types of, uh, you know, sort of negative security policy postures with the web app fire, what else can we do to not only cover the vulnerabilities, but to extend and enrich the application security posture. And so can we look at the behavior of the browser? Can we identify the browser, the user, the device? Uh, can we look at, are they behaving like a, a legitimate human user or is it a bot? Uh, 40 to 70% of, of website traffic is, is bots based on most of the surveys we see. And even talking directly to some customers, they're telling us, hey, most of my traffic is automated. A lot of it's bots creating all kinds of noise. If you can reduce, reduce that signal to noise ratio and you can reduce those automated scans, you're reducing your threat surface. And reducing the risk overall to the business. Absolutely. So do you want to do the big reveal on who's the dude who walking around telling WAFs are dead? 
Uh, that might be me. Uh, I, I might have tweaked a few noses in our, our product management department, but uh, much like load balancers died uh, some years back and we needed to start looking at application delivery controllers, we need to look at WAF in a new way. And look, if we're looking at WAF technology and we know we need it, we need to identify WAF technology that's really aggressive in terms of uh, how far can it extend our application security? Can it extend the security out to the browser? Can it give me options to uh, improve security all the way out to the browser and get more into behavioral analysis and give me uh, application security policies that might be even easier to implement despite the fact that they're advanced. So a little bit counterintuitive there, more advanced security features, less configuration time. So that's a, a, one of the key advantages for ASM and the WAF marketplace. Pretty cool. So we're not burying WAFs by any means, but it's the death of the WAF as we know it. And he feels fine. Absolutely. <laughs> I really appreciate your time, Brian. Always Thank good you. seeing you. Good to see you. Right on. Hey, how do people follow you online? Uh, at B.A. McHenry. So uh, that's uh, Brian Alexander, BAM, as some people at F5 know, know me. So at B.A. McHenry on Twitter. And uh, I'm writing on informationsecuritybuzz.com monthly. So monthly byline on there. So look out. That's where the death of WAF idea first saw the light of day. And it's turned into a talk and some videos. Now an interview with the <laughs> illustrious Peter Silva. <laughs> cool. Really appreciate your time, Brian. A lot more about WAFs and whether or not we're burying them. But actually, we're not. I appreciate your time. For Brian, I'm Peter, and we're with F5 Networks. Thanks for watching.